So I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro Max for about a week and on paper, it doesn't look like anything groundbreaking has actually occurred here. And you'd be right to assume that this is the case, but I think Apple made a lot of small but sizably beneficial changes to the quality of life experience on a pro iPhone. But okay, I'm not saying that you need to rush out and buy this phone if you own an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, but if you own a 13 Pro and older, and more specifically, if you are a camera enthusiast, this is actually a pretty good year to upgrade. Let's start with the infamous USB-C port. It is here on iPhone 15 Pro Max, and while charging this phone on USB-C is awesome, I'm more excited about everything you can do with USB-C besides charging your phone. You can charge your AirPods, Apple Watches, other Android phones, read SD cards if you have the right connector. I can use my studio display with it. It even supports Ethernet through USB-C. The list is pretty endless. But specifically with the Pro iPhone, Phones, we're getting a USB-C port with USB 3 speeds, so we can expect about 20 times faster transfer speeds than before, which can come especially handy for more pro workflows, which we'll talk about later in the video. I actually would have loved though to see Thunderbolt 3 here, to be honest, as just a professional user, as we do get this on iPad Pros, but maybe that's on the horizon on next year's iPhones. Apple also took a new approach this year to design by pairing a titanium band with 100% recycled aluminum, resulting in an iPhone 15 Pro Max that feels noticeably lighter than before. I got mine in natural titanium, and this is the color to get in my opinion. It does a better job handling fingerprints than the darker options that Apple has, and it also has new contoured edges that aren't as sharp like last year's, so it has made a pretty noticeable difference in the comfort of holding it in your hand. And if you pay attention to the bezels and borders of this iPhone, they are the thinnest ones Apple has ever put on a phone. They actually were able to keep the same display size while still being able to marginally shrink the height and width of the iPhone 15 Pro Max for a smaller footprint thanks to these bezel reductions. Apple also made changes to the repairability of this phone design. So if you do break the back glass, the repair cost is $199 on the 15 Pro Max, whereas on the 14 Pro Max, it was $549, so sizable decrease in cost here. With all that being said, while I am tempted to go naked with this iPhone 15 Pro Max, I can't really bring myself to it since I'm really prone to breaking my tech all the time. So I slapped on channel partner Moff's new Snap phone case, who were kind enough to partner with me on this portion of the video. It's made from this Movas vegan leather, which was developed by Moff themselves. And I'm telling you, it gives my iPhone 15 Pro Max that premium look and feel I've been craving. Their misty cove color is my personal favorite as it complements the natural titanium camera bump on my iPhone, plus the button are super tactile and satisfying to press. It also is stain and scratch resistant, and it feels incredible in the hand thanks to the smooth texture of the vegan leather, in addition to how slim it is. And Moft has developed their cases to have tremendous color endurance, so I have no worries of the white color fading over time. The snap phone case is MagSafe compatible, so it will work with a variety of different accessories, including their snap-on phone stand and wallet. It's made of the same high-quality vegan leather materials and features a strong magnetic force of up to 15 newtons, so I have no worries of this falling off of my phone. And I appreciate its subtle design as well. It's not obvious I have a wallet with valuable cards in it, as it's hidden until you actually open it. And this wallet also doubles as a phone stand. I love to use this stand to prop up my phone while I'm eating breakfast to enjoy content. And it has been incredibly useful for me as well on FaceTime and video calls with my friends. I cannot recommend this product enough if you want more flexibility with how you position your iPhone in addition to having the ability to carry more cards with you on the go. Honestly, Moft has knocked it out of the park with these accessories. So if you're on the hunt for alternative leather options for your your iPhone since Apple isn't providing them anymore. Moft is the company to check out, so don't wait. Click the link in the description down below to order yours today. Huge shout out to Moft for teaming up with me on this portion of the video. Okay, so there's still more to this new design and it has to do with the action button. It replaces the old mute switch that has been on iPhones for years with a customizable button that you can literally program to do anything you want. By default, it will act as a mute switch to silence your phone, but you can use it to enable focus modes, launch a camera, flashlight, voice memo, Siri shortcut, literally anything. It is the most Android thing Apple has ever put in their phone in years, and I love every second of it. I personally have mine set to the camera, and from my experience, it's been super convenient just to launch 
right away with this button. Albeit though, the Pro Max is still a large phone. So it actually has been a bit of an adjustment period trying to get used to pressing the action button as it's so high above where your hand usually rests. It was quite uncomfortable at first. It's, it's a lot easier actually on the regular iPhone 15 Pro to press the action button. But with the Pro Max, I have gotten used to it now. Uh, but just fair warning, if you do want the larger iPhone, you do have to get used to where that button is. So now let's talk about the performance. The iPhone 15 Pro Max does come with a new A17 Pro chip, which Apple states is a major step forward in iPhone performance. If we peel back that curtain just a little bit, it's about a 10% increase in CPU performance and up to 20% increase in GPU performance, which also includes the ability for new rendering features like ray tracing for gaming, which honestly caught me by surprise when Apple announced that. That is actually a really big deal. So the future of gaming on iPhones is going to be pretty interesting over the next few years. When I heard them talk about Resident Evil and a new Assassin's Creed game being ported to the iPhone as full console versions of those games and not dumbed down mobile versions, I was super impressed by that and really the potential of all that. To be frank with you, I'm not a gamer on my iPhone. I'm more of a PS5 and Nintendo Switch kind of guy. And if you're in the same boat as me where you don't game on your phone that much, the A17 Pro doesn't noticeably feel like this groundbreaking major step forward as all I'm doing and probably what you're doing is social media, emails, connecting with friends, photo editing, nothing too crazy. But the potential in the gaming space is huge. I actually predict, and here's my sort of hot take on this, that Apple is really setting themselves up to disrupt mobile gaming in a big way. Um, so something to keep an eye on in the, over the next like couple of years if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So before we get to the cameras, there's two things I wanna bring up that are really cool features that I personally love because I'm just a little nitpicker. iPhone 15 Pro Max finally has Wi-Fi 6E. So I've been enjoying the six gigahertz internet speeds in my home and also airdrops are a lot faster with other Wi-Fi 6E devices that support airdrop like my MacBook Pro. These phones also have a new ultra wideband chip, which allows you to precision find your friends and family who also own iPhone 15s, which is super cool if you are in like a crowded, busy area. It also works if you have a newer Apple Watch, you can precisely find where your iPhone is lost once you get out of range and it's pretty useful for me already since I lose my phone all the time. And there's also a thread radio, which really was surprising, but really cool that Apple threw this in. This is specific only to the iPhone 15 Pro models, where you'll be able to connect smart home devices directly to the iPhone without requiring a hub. It's not out yet. It will come in a future software update, but hey, kudos Apple. That is actually a really cool feature that they didn't have to put in an iPhone. Okay, let's get to the meat of this phone and talk about the cameras. Apple is touting that there's gonna be seven different pro lenses, including a macro, an ultra wide, which is a 13 millimeter equivalent, a 1X, which is a 24 millimeter equivalent, and within the 1X, a 28 millimeter, and 35 millimeter lens, a 2X 48 millimeter equivalent lens, and a new 5X telephoto, which is 120 millimeter equivalent. Oh wow, that was a lot. I've seen a lot of things online that Apple shouldn't be allowed to call these seven different lenses. And honestly, I don't blame a lot of people for thinking this. It's easy to think that these are just digital zooms and that, that there's really no difference. But if you look at the carousel of images from the 13 millimeter at the 0.5X ultra wide lens, all the way to the 5X telephoto at 120 millimeters, you can see real legitimate lens compression happening in each image as we go down the zoom range. Okay, so to catch everybody up, uh, lens compression essentially is when anything in the background is appearing larger and compressed closer to the foreground. And as we move the camera further away from our subject and we zoom into that subject, the person we're zooming into will appear larger and more compressed in the frame. That's literally what's happening happening as we move through the zoom range on the 15 Pro Max. So essentially, through some Apple trickery and magic, we have a zoom lens from 0.5x at 13 millimeters 
all the way to 5x at 120 millimeters that is compressing our images and giving the same effect that we would have gotten with a traditional zoom lens on a regular camera. Okay, so <laughs> I hope that made sense. I didn't lose you there uh, because now we're gonna move on to my thoughts on the camera system. I'll be doing a full comprehensive camera review as there's so many things I wanna talk about that could literally be a full length, like 10, 15 minute YouTube video but here's the rundown of my thoughts. I'm a huge fan of the 5X telephoto on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I find it to be way more useful in 99% of everyday shooting scenarios. You're just able to get images and compositions that are just not possible on a 3X zoom on the 15 Pro. If you look at these comparisons, I find the 5X framing and composition to be way more appealing as an image than what I was getting on 3X. As you can see though, I do have an affinity for buildings, uh, hence why I live in downtown. Toronto, so I apologize for a lot of building photos. Apple also made a really crucial change to regular non-pro raw images. They are now 24 megapixels, which is double the resolution of the 12 megapixel non-pro raw images that we were getting from the 14 Pro. We also get customizable format options, so we can choose between pro raw, which is the standard larger file size for 48 megapixel images, or you can opt for 48 megapixel Heath, which is a much lower file size, but still giving you that higher resolution, which is a welcomed addition to anybody that wants to save a little bit of space. Portraits also have been improved for the better, where we can take regular photos in the normal camera mode, capture the depth information as shown by an F icon appearing, and we can turn on and toggle the portrait mode after the fact and add in our own level of appropriate blur to the image. I really, 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 really like this, um, as it has always kind of been a toss up for me if I wanted to do a portrait shot or a regular photo shot. I, I practically don't have to decide now and I don't really think I'm ever going to use portrait mode again. Video on the Pro Max though has taken a huge step forward. We're now getting ProRes RAW on the iPhone and as you can see from my demo videos that I've shot in ProRes RAW and color graded, these look phenomenal. I was taken aback by how good this shooting mode is if you have the time and patience to color grade the footage properly. I honestly think people will mistake iPhone footage now for regular like cinema video cameras as it's super easy to match the colors now and really get more out of the video capabilities of an iPhone. You can plug an SSD drive into here as well and record 4K60 ProRes straight into the drive which is really cool for anyone who's interested in doing that as well. So that's iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's a lot of small changes, but the changes that they did make were actually a pretty big deal, especially in the camera department if you are a professional or just an enthusiast photographer or videographer, in my opinion. For everyone else, if things like USB-C, a new titanium frame, and action buttons were the only things that you felt you could relate to or like about this new phone, then I don't think there's a lot here for you unless you haven't upgraded your phone since the iPhone 12 and below. I also dropped a brand new wallpaper pack called Euphoria, which features 20 high resolution 8K wallpapers for your iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. If you use my special discount code, buy one, get one, you can get the Euphoria pack plus either the Symmetry wallpaper pack or the Winter Wonderland wallpaper pack free of charge. The links will be in the description down below for you guys to purchase if you want to support my channel directly and sort of like help out with the videos that I'm making here. But anyways, subscribe if you're brand new, comment hashtag I made it if you finished this video and watch my latest video right here. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.